Hi, we're gonna talk about valuations. Guys, don't skim on valuations. Don't try to cut your budget on valuations. Valuations are a huge, huge part of the buying process. And a lot of people tend to forget about it. Everyone just thinks, oh, what's the rate? What's the fee? No, you need to find out what the problems are with that property, okay? So we're gonna talk about the different types of valuations, how you should protect yourself. Never, ever, ever skim on valuations and watch this video. Thanks a lot, all the best. Hi, it's Pi, I'm here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Um, one of the bits that people often miss out uh, or not consider as much is valuations and getting surveys done. Um, we're gonna talk about a couple of the standard sort of options you've got for surveys if you're looking to buy a property and how they differ and some of the things to watch out for. So <clears throat> let's crack on. So normally when you go for a mortgage, uh, the lenders will need to send their own surveyors around. So that's really for the interest of the lender and that's the first point you need to be aware of. When you're paying for the survey, it will say survey fees, I don't know, 200 pounds, 300 pounds. You're paying for the lender to send the surveyor around to double check on the property. And that's just called the basic survey. Now, one of the most important points on that is it's not your survey. So some lenders will choose to release that survey information to you. Others, many of them, will say, no, we don't actually release that information. So if you get a down valuation, for example, often let clients say, well, can you send me the valuation report? Often a lot of lenders do not give you that report and just say, look, it's downvalued by this amount. And you, what you've got to make sure is a basic survey, that's what it is. It could be an automated desktop valuation. So they could have just checked it on the PC. They could have sent somebody around and the guy could have said, yeah, I can see it's a house. It's got a door. It's got some windows and that's about it. They could go in the property and have a very you know, general look, but they're not going to go and check behind the walls. They're not going to check behind the floorboards. They're not going to look at the electric box maybe. So, you know, it's very, very basic and that's what it is. Um, now, lenders would want that. So, for example, where you would have a basic survey, in, in my opinion, is if it's a new build property. Uh, if it's a new build property, you've got the 10-year warranty generally with all the new builds, um, and it's a new build property. So you'd say, okay, well, I'll take it. I'll take a basic uh, valuation. Or sometimes some some flats. Generally, some clients will go, well, actually, I'll take a basic valuation because it's in a block of flats. And uh, you know, internally, I will know it, it's sound. So that, that those are the only reasons you should really, or, or some people opt for a basic valuation. Other than that, you should be going pretty much always for a home buyer survey. Okay, home buyer survey is a more in-depth survey. Um, they'll just check out more things. They'll check out uh, the property, the structure of the property. They'll see if there's any cracks, if there's any damp, if there's any issues, is there any subsidence, is there any, been any problems with trees near it. So it's a more in-depth report and that's the report that you can get yourself. Now you've got options. You can either get a report yourself or often what lenders do is they give you a chart. So they've given us a chart, we'll say, you know, if we just do a basic survey, it's 200 pounds. If you go for a home buyer survey, it's 600 pounds. Now, some lenders will say, um, you know, they've got the pricing there, so it's, it's pretty straightforward. So um, it's generally more, a lot more expensive, but then it's a lot more detailed. And let's be honest, this is a big investment. Buying property is a big investment. And for you not to get this done at the start um, and risk it, um, you know, it could be a problem. You know, you're buying a property, you might have a crack down the side of it. I'm not a surveyor. Your mortgage broker is not a surveyor. You're probably not a surveyor. Your cousin or your brother who's going to come around and have a look, at, or your dad who's going to come and look at the property, they're not a surveyor. So get it, get the job done, looked at properly. Um, because first of all, you want to know what you're getting yourself into. Secondly, if there is any problems, you can have that discussion with the estate agent and the people you're buying from there and then. So you can negotiate, okay? So always uh, go for at least a home buyer survey. And then the next stage is a building survey. It's a full building, structural building survey. Now, those type of surveys are recommended if, you know, if, you, if it's an old property, if you are super cautious and you just think, Do you know what, I'll spend the money because I just want to sleep, I want to know, basically. Um, or it's maybe near a river, near a bit of flooding in the past, or there's been structural problems in the past, there's mines close to it, 
you know, it could be a number of reasons why you decide to go for a building survey. So those are the three options, your basic survey, home buyer's report, full structural survey. Okay, now let's talk about um, the process itself. So generally what happens is when a application goes into the lender, whether it's a residential or buy to let, um, lenders will treat it differently. Some lenders will underwrite the case, which means they will look at all the paperwork, they'll look at everything, they'll find out if, if the deal fits, if the affordability fits, if the documents are okay. Other lenders, what they will do is they'll instruct the survey straight away. And that's important that you know, you know, uh, certainly the building survey. If home buyer survey could take a little bit longer because, you know, they have to actually allocate a surveyor. But when a lot of the lenders at the moment, when you put in an application in, they're instructing surveys, but not all. Um, so, and when, when the surveyor goes around the property, um, and let's assume you're buying a property, I don't know, for £300,000. The surveyor goes round, and this is what happens normally with remortgages, okay? Um, surveyor goes around and says, no, it's not worth 300 it's worth 290 And you say, well, actually, it's all day long. Look at all these properties in Zoopla. They're all going for more. But are they selling for more? And uh, to be honest with you, you've got then have to go and challenge that surveyor. And in my opinion, very, 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 rarely the lender will turn around and go well, actually the surveyor is right because what they will do is they'll put it onto the surveyor and the surveyor will say well of course I was right I went to see the property it's my opinion I'm a professional so very rarely do surveyors go back on their valuations I have funny enough I've had one to, uh, this week where the surveyor went there classed as one of the rooms as a playroom and not a bedroom and the client said well actually when when we're going to convert this property into a buy to let that's going to be a lettable room so what they did is they downvalued the the rent so the client went back challenged it successfully survey came back and said yep no problem we'll do that but very rarely I, I i'm seeing that you know surveyors get challenged in all my years you know it's just it's it's a bit problematic because you're essentially telling them that they've got things wrong they don't like hearing it and the lenders want to stay out of it because essentially um you know, if something goes wrong, they want to go after the surveyor. So they, they would want the, the, the surveyor to put their head on the block, essentially. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's really the survey process. My opinion is, guys, you should always get your own independent home buyer's report um, or, or get a home buyer's report, sorry. Um, don't just rely on the lenders. And, and many lenders offer free, uh, free surveys. So I'll give you an example. Santander, for example, they do free valuation in a lot of their cases. Halifax. Up and up into a certain limit, they'll only charge you two hundred pounds. Lots and lots of lenders tend to do free valuation, free surveys um, on remortgages. So a lot of remortgage deals come with free surveys. And often now, if the loan to value is below, I don't know, seventy five percent, eighty percent loan to value, they're often not even sending anybody around. They'll just do an automated desktop survey. So um, big backlogs, obviously, because of the count, because of the um, the, the lockdown in the past lockdown there were many many transactions that were put on hold because surveyors were not going around thankfully during this lockdown surveyors are going around so it's, it's generally a lot better but like I said and, and it's a couple of things to do on the survey just be transparent and be clear to the surveyor when he's walking around don't try to influence them too much they know what they're doing they see properties all the time so uh, you know just keep things civil keep things professional um, and, and you know just just basically let them do their jobs um, normally when they do uh, come round um, they normally get the sur survey back to the lender within 48 hours and then the lender may have a processing time there are some lenders at the moment that have got horrific processing times but you know lenders normally take a couple of days but like I said that's in a normal environment some lenders are taking a lot longer um, so hopefully you found this useful um, surveys are uh, a vital and uh, you know do not try to save money on that part okay don't do it don't do it it's a nightmare what happens if you get a crack five years down the line uh, uh, on the side of the house what happens I mean I'll, I'll give you some scenarios okay I had a client phone me up a few years ago I am wonderful property I found on auction all right great it's really all day long is 500,000 and I'm gonna pick it up for 360 I said wow that's a really good deal where is it on oh, a really good area Wow, that's a really good deal. I said to him, do you know what? I wish I'd bought this property. Um, it sounds like a really good steal. So do me a favor, get a survey done. Does something don't add up. 
He said, all right, no problem. I'll get a survey done. He goes, oh, it's, it's costing me a lot of money. Do you know, it's going to cost me X amount. I said, no, 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 go and get the survey done. Before. He goes, what if I don't even buy it at an auction? You know, I've, I've gone and spent all this money. I said, you just, that's the price of doing business. You know, if you're going to get the game that much money out of it, go and do it. So anyway, he phones me about a week later and he said, Pyam, do you know what? You've just saved me hundreds of thousands of pounds because the property's got Japanese knotweed. So, yeah, or, or it's got, or the next door neighbor had Japanese knotweed or some, there was a problem with it, which he didn't read because in most cases they would have to disclose it if there was, if it was known and they'll have to disclose it in the legal pack. Um, so, yeah, you know, movement, cracks. Uh, I'll give you an example. I had a, I had another property, a uh, guy bought a property uh, and the property had movement, okay? Um, so yeah, there you go. You know, you're, many of the cases you're, you're buying old properties, you know, these properties are very, very old. And, you know, at least don't get a home buyer so don't get someone, get a professional to come around, look at the property uh, and know what you're getting yourself into. All the best, subscribe as always, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.